Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we are taking delivery of my new Heritage Edition Land Cruiser. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Southtown Mitsubishi for getting me this Land Cruiser. They're the ones who sourced this Land Cruiser for me. If you guys follow the channel, you know I review cars there all the time. They obviously sell new Mitsubishis, but they also sell a boatload of pre-owned cars. Like, just give you guys an idea of how many cars they have or the types of cars they have. They have a Viper ACR in inventory right now. They also have a C8 Z06. So that gives you kind of an idea of uh, why I bought a Land Cruiser from a Mitsubishi dealership. Check out their pre-owned inventory in the description down below. Let's get into the video. So I will have a normal review on this Heritage Edition Land Cruiser, or rather my Heritage Edition Land Cruiser. I'll film it uh, over the weekend, but I just want to give you guys a quick sneak peek on this. Uh, so if you're wondering, this is a 2020 model year. The last model year for the Land Cruiser was 2021 with this 200 series Land Cruiser. So this is the second to last year. And with the Heritage Edition, basically you get these special bronze wheels, uh, sadly pretty wimpy tires. <laughs> will say that but you got this cool bronze wheels and then it also blacks out stuff like the headlight it makes the grill coloration a little bit different you've got the roof rack there which is pretty cool with the basket and then you got the cool heritage land cruiser logo on it um but outside of that it's pretty much a regular land cruiser except got to uh Actually, I might have to do the key fob because I can't remember where the button is. I feel really stupid doing this on video. I think I found it. I just bought this like 10 minutes ago, so I'm not familiar with all the buttons yet. Give me a break. <laughs> Anyways, um, another big thing is the fact that we don't have a third row. Uh, you can get a third row with the Heritage for the 21 model year. They are extremely expensive, like like over $100,000. I don't think it's worth it. I think just get a regular Land Cruiser if you want a third row. Um, but yeah, no third row. So that's a thing that's a little bit of a difference. And then uh, some other stuff with this. Uh, basically, the Land Cruiser comes with the standard interior. The Heritage has this cool stitching is what I noticed the difference between this uh, and basically a normal Land Cruiser. But outside of that, it looks like all the other trim is the same. And if you're wondering on mine, I'll start her up. Do, 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 do. 12,000 miles on the odometer. So it's not brand, brand new, but I mean, super low mileage. I mean, it's a four year old vehicle with only 12,000 miles on it. Uh, so yeah, not too bad. Oh, I just realized there's another thing with the Heritage Edition is it doesn't come with the cooler box as standard. Again, that was an option you could add, I think, for 21, but you couldn't add for 2020. So no cool box. Again, I don't care about that because that's a feature I never use. But yeah, no cool box, no third row. And then it also has a black headliner. I noticed the regular Land Cruisers have like a light colored headliner. This has a black headliner. So that's another thing that's a little bit different. And so now that I am leaving, I need to clarify some things. And then I also want to talk to you guys about some things with this Land Cruiser in terms of plans for it, because I need some advice. Uh, and also that's the wrong uh, exit. That's the worst one to go out of. So I'm going to go to the other one. This is not the easiest to drive with one hand. This has, this feels like a hydraulic rack. I don't think this is, I don't think this is electric power steering. And hydraulic racks always have a little bit more weight to them. It's, it's not bad, but you just have to use a little bit, a little bit more muscle with them. Uh, but anyways, this is my Land Cruiser. This is not my wife's Land Cruiser. If you guys follow the channel, you know that we've been looking for a Land Cruiser for her as well. We're going to be getting a three-row uh, Land Cruiser, which if you have a low mileage 200 series with a third row, uh, <laughs> hit me up because we are looking for one. Uh, but no, this one is for me. So um, basically just to tell the whole story very quickly, I had a G550 G Wagon with a G Professional package on order and Mercedes uh, basically reached out to the dealership and said that they weren't going to build my order and that if I wanted to order a G-Wagon that I needed to put an order in for 20, like another order later for 2025. And I decided to just completely back out of the G-Wagon idea. I basically did a whole like search uh, with G-Wagons where I looked to see if I could find a replacement for my order around the country and I couldn't. Everything that I looked at was basically fully loaded interior, which I didn't want. The one that I ordered had a base interior because I don't care about luxury features. And so I just said, you know what? It just, it just doesn't feel right. And so I started looking at the Land Cruisers because my wife's been looking at one and I found that I really like this vehicle. I love how it looks, I love how it drives, and I love the fact that it has a lot of aftermarket support, which means that I can turn this into a more capable off-roader. I mean, this is like, 
the off-road vehicle for the entire world. Like anyone that lives in a country where you don't have the best infrastructure owns a Land Cruiser. Like it's, it's just because of the reliability and also because of the off-road capability. And so yes, this is the vehicle that I'm buying instead of a G-Wagon, which is a really weird thing for me to say. But yeah, that's just the reality of the situation. And I really like it because first off, this is half the cost of a G-Wagon. So it saves me a boatload of money. And then the other thing is, I think this fits my personality more. Like I kept, you know, after I ordered the G-Wagon, I kept thinking like, I don't think I'm the right person for this car because I do not care about status symbols whatsoever. I don't care about like, I just don't care about what other people think about me. I just care about how a car drives and how it looks and the reliability of it. And so I kind of like, again, came to the conclusion that Land Cruiser, I think it looks cool. I think it drives really well. It's super reliable. And this is a car that flies under the radar. Like someone commented that Land Cruisers are stealth wealth. And I think there's a lot of truth to that because yeah, it's not a cheap car. It is a more expensive car. So you do have to, you know, make a decent amount of money to be able to afford one of these, but it's not a flashy car whatsoever. Like you don't get this car if you want people to think that you're loaded. So outside of the reasoning and all that, in terms of the garage situation now, uh, where we're at is we traded my wife's Defender for this Land Cruiser, which I know might seem weird because it was her Defender. The reason why we did that is I am extremely concerned about Land Rover Defender values moving forward with the new Lexus GX, uh, you know, hitting the market soon. I think Land Rover Defenders are going to take a huge nosedive in terms of values. And so I figured let's just get rid of her car as soon as we can, because we've already taken a really big value hit on it. And like, let's not take another value hit on it. Cause again, I, I do think that's going to happen again. Don't take my word for that. We'll just see what the market ends up doing with the defenders. Uh, but we are still looking for a land cruiser for her. Um, so we're going to trade. If you guys don't know, I still own the GT 350 Mustang. We're going to trade that for her land cruiser, uh, once we find it. And so this now leads me into talking about modifications with the land cruiser. I need your advice. So I don't want to do like an insane off-road build with the land cruiser because if I want to do hardcore off-roading, we have a Jeep Wrangler with 35s and I've got the Ford Bronco with 37s. And so like, yeah, I, I, I would rather just take one of those off-road if I'm going to do extreme off-roading. And so what I'm thinking with this is honestly, I want to do just like 33s, maybe 34 inch tall tires. 34s kind of makes me uncomfortable because I know you can fit them, but also I just don't think I'm going to need that for, I'm going to use this for daily driving. And then basically if I take it off-road, I'm going to take it on like less than five out of tens. So nothing uh, crazy. So if you could comment down below your advice, what I'm thinking is uh, to do the icon suspension. So the shocks and the lift to be able to fit 33s and then also do their 17. So they have a uh, 17 inch wheels that work with the Land Cruiser. So I'm thinking about doing basically their lift and their wheels and then doing 33 inch tall tires, all terrain tires. Let me know if that's not the best route to go to Land Cruiser. I just, everything I've read and I, I did review a Land Cruiser with Icon shocks about a year ago and it drove amazingly well. It, it seems like that's the route to go. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about that in terms of the Land Cruiser build. So that is going to sum things up for today's video. Like I said, review coming this weekend. And again, any advice on the Land Cruiser would be much appreciated because I do plan on keeping this vehicle for at least the next 10 years, even more. Uh, these Land Cruisers are supposed to be able to last at least 20 years, and they're supposed to be able to go like 200,000 miles without needing any sort of major uh, repairs. And so yeah, that's my plan is to keep this for a long time. And I know people don't believe that I'm going to do that because of my, you know, buying and selling of cars in the past for the channel. But there is, I'm just going to say this right now, this is just me being truthful. There is nothing coming out in the market that really excites me. Like the Lexus GX 550, I, that's exciting. But this, just with how this drives and everything, this is like exactly what I want out of a car. Body on frame, old school, and the GX has some of that, but it doesn't really quite, it's, it's too new, it's too new school for me. It's got too much tech. And I know it sounds weird because I review cars and so you'd think I'd like all the new tech, but I, that's just, that's just not where I'm at. I, I like the old, I like the older stuff. It's just, I know, it, again, it just feels like, it feels more like me. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about the Land Cruiser. Let me know if you think if I made the right uh, decision and I'll see you.